viruses. So I think he uses a different textbook, but basically viruses will be the same whether it's in this textbook or the other one. Make sense? So you will have his PowerPoint. So just take notes off his lecture, and I will have his PowerPoint too, so that I will test you off of what he's going to teach you. And I will develop a review off of what he's going to show you on Thursday, or Tuesday rather. Now, with that being said, your test tentatively will be November 1st, that's a Thursday. So your next test will be tentatively November 1. It's a Thursday. It depends on how much you get through on Tuesday. Now, Chapter 13 is a big chapter. I've looked at Dr. K's PowerPoints, and he has a lot of PowerPoint slides. I'm not sure how many slides we'll get through with you guys, but we'll just work it out. So far, November 1, Thursday, that will be the test. Yes, Will? So we're going to be testing on Dr. K's slides. Dr. K's slides, because who's, who's going to be teaching you October 23rd? Yes, sir. In other words, does that make sense, everyone? Yes. Who will be before you Tuesday at 2 o'clock on October 23rd? Dr. K. So he's going to be teaching you. Therefore, I have to basically test you on his PowerPoint. In other words, I have it, right? And so will you. I said what? I will give that to you. Therefore, whatever he is talking about, right, I'll let you know what I'm going to hold you accountable to. Make sense? In other words, if you have a question, right, if you don't understand something, that's when you what? You let me know. Make sense? In other words, if you don't understand something we talked about, then you come into me and say, I don't understand X, Y, Z, and I'll explain it to you. In other words, he's going to have his own slides, which is fine, right? He's going to talk about viruses. Viruses are the same whether it's this book or the next book. Make sense? They're basically what? Obligate. And so the parasites are not living, right? They basically have DNA or RNA, capsids. Some have envelopes. It's the same stuff. God, it's the same. Any other questions? All right, here we go. Now we're going to deal with eukaryotic organisms and whole page, particular attention to some of them that are pathogens. Now with the eukaryotic microorganisms, we have some options, okay? We've got the protozoans. Okay, proto means first, right? Zoan comes from Z-O-O, -O, meaning animal. So literally, it means first animals. These are all unicellular, animal-like microbes. So really, what microorganisms? They're all microorganisms. All of them are unicellular. Next, we'll talk about fungi. Now, some fungi are unicellular. Most are multicellular, okay? And they're all eukaryotic. We'll talk about algae. Okay, these are your photosynthetic organisms. They can be unicellular or multicellular. We will not talk about water molds and slime molds. Okay? Water molds and slime molds, they're in their own little class. They're not even fungi. And we won't even get into them today. Now, all of those sets, whether protozoans, fungi, or algae, okay, except for algae, Protozoans and fungi, some include human pathogens, only some. Most are beneficial. Most algae are beneficial. Most fungi are beneficial. Protozoans, not so much. So only a few of them are actually human pathogens. Okay. Now, in terms of reproduction in your youth, okay, it's very complicated compared to prokaryotes. If you heard what I was telling Milton before we started class, okay, Milton asked about mitosis versus binary fission, okay? Prokaryotes, as you had a quiz on that recently, prokaryotes are produced by what? Binary fission, because they have a circular chromosome. It's pretty easy to move a circle, right? So they have a circular chromosome, and it's what? Compacted, right? It's compacted. It's pretty easy to move it around. So in other words, in binary fission, you go from one circular chromosome to what? To two. And as the cell elongates, right, you basically do what? Separate two circular chromosomes. It's real simple. But in eukaryotes, okay, we have what? Linear chromosomes. And usually, okay, eukaryotes are diploid, usually, which means they have two sets of all the chromosomes. So you've got all these sticks, right, which are duplicated in the nucleus. Make sense? Which makes it kind of difficult to separate them out when you're doing what? Cell division. So because of that, that's why we do mitosis. So mitosis is basically the separation of what? Duplicated linear chromosomes. You go from this to that in mitosis. You can do that. Why? Because they have what? Linear chromosomes that are duplicated when they do what? Cell division. Probes will have that issue. Okay? Also, the eukaryotes have a number of ways in terms of asexual reproduction. They can do budding. Just like some pros can do budding, some yukes can do budding. They can do fragmentation, for example. They can do that. So they have options in terms of asexual production. 
They also okay, can reproduce sexually. Many of them can do both. So many of them can do asexual as well as sexual reproduction. Now, since probes do not do sexual reproduction, right, they only have to worry about one thing, right? They only have to do what? Binary vision makes sense because they're only doing what? Asexual reproduction. Now, with youths, many of them do both. So if they're doing sexual reduction, that means they've got to make gametes, right? Make sense? So since some youths are doing sexual reduction, they have to make gametes. What are gametes? What are they? Sperm and ova, right? Okay, you got to make those, which means you have to have another set of cell divisions just to make the gametes. Make sense? Whole another set of problems to worry about. Okay? And it is mentioned... Algae and fungi both do sexual and a a asexual protozoans. Okay. Some of them can do both. But all algae and all fungi, they've got options. Now, usually, as you go higher up in the kingdom, for example, by the time you get to kingdom plantae, you're just doing sexual. Okay? By the time you get to animalia, you're just doing sexual. But at the lower divisions, they've got some options. Does make sense? Keep that in mind. Now let's quickly talk about this nuclear division, meaning how do you divide nucleus? Because if you're going to do cell division, whether it's just to make another cell or to make gametes, you have to divide nucleus out. So how do you do that? All right. So let's see. The nucleus in youth normally has either one or two complete copies of the genome. Now if the youth has one complete copy of the genome, that's what? Haploid, right? Haploid. Now, most fungi, most algae, and some protozoans are haploid in their adult phase. In other words, in their adult phase, many of them are haploid. In other words, the phase you see, in other words, you saw some mold and lab, that mold on the plate, that's haploid. Okay? The things you don't see, they're the diploid phase. Make sense? Okay. Now, if the organism is diploid, okay, so some fungi, some algae, some protozoans, they can be diploid, meaning they have two sets of the chromosomes. Now, here's the deal. If they are di diploid, meaning if the fungus, the alga, or the protozoan, if they're diploid, usually that stage you don't see. It's transient. In other words, the diploid organism will do this process here. I'll get into that in a minute. The diploid organism will then do meiosis to go back to the haploid form. Make sense? Because when you see a fungus or when you see the alga, it's really the haploid form. That diploid form is really a reproductive form. You really don't see it that often. Make sense? Now let's quickly talk about these two types of nuclear division. <coughs> I'm not going to go through the steps of mitosis, right? Prophase and metaphase and anaphase, telophase. That was bio one, right? I'm not going to do bio one in here. This is microbiology, so you should already understand that process. Makes sense? Okay. Well, what I will say is, what is the main difference, right, between the two? Here's the deal: If you are doing a sexual reduction, you are using mitosis, makes sense? Because the end result of mitosis is you maintain the same chromosome number. In other words, if you have, let's say, four chromosomes in your cell, correct? And when you do mitosis, you have two cells with what? How many chromosomes in those two cells? Four, right? Because in mitosis, you maintain the same number of chromosomes. You're just doing a sexual reduction, basically making clones. As far as so good? So mitosis, in this case, is for asexual production. You go from one cell to two, and the chromosome number is the same. However, if these organisms are doing what? Sexual reproduction, right? You need to cut the chromosome number in half to make the gametes. So the only purpose, hear me out, the only purpose of meiosis is what? To make gametes. To cut the chromosome number in half so that you can do what? Sexual reproduction. Make sense? In other words, if we look at humans, for example, we're not talking about humans, but I'll use that as an example. How many chromosomes do you have in your somatic cells? Somatic meaning body cells, okay? How many chromosomes are in your somatic cells? Mm -hmm. 40 what? 46. 46, okay? So in your somatic cells, all cells besides the gametes, correct, you've got 46 chromosomes. Now let's pretend, for example, if you made gametes that have what the same number of chromosomes, in other words, you've got sperm with 46, right? You've got ova with 46. When they come together, how many chromosomes will be in that resulting zygote? 90. 92, right? 92. Now, do humans have 92 chromosomes? No. No. You have how many? 
46. So in other words, in your gametes, right, sperm and ova, guess what? How many chromosomes do you think they have? Think about it. 23. Exactly, right? So sperm and ova have 23 chromosomes so that when they get together to make a zygote, you now have what? 46. So meiosis does just that. It takes the cells that will end up being a sperm, right, takes the cell that will end up being the ovum, you go through meiosis, so that you go from 46 to what? 23, makes sense? So that is the end goal of meiosis, right? So now you know, meiosis cut the chromosome number in half for the sole purpose of making gametes, right? Mitosis is what? Asexual reproduction. Keep all the chromosome number the same if you're just making clones, got it? Now, after you do mitosis, right, or after you do meiosis, that's nuclear division.